there's still a lot that we could do with the editing, like uh, slow motion and, and fast motion and such, but that's not too common for a lot of people. What's more common is, like I've got in my notes over here, music. So I will say, do not use copyrighted music in your work. Actually, let me, let me rewrite that. Let me say, do not use copyrighted <laughs> music in your work without, without paying permission. thousands of dollars and written permission of course yes so that's the thing if you buy a CD you've only bought the license to play it back you haven't bought the license to use it especially in a commercial purpose this this video that I'm doing here is for my website I'm trying to get advertisers or I'm trying to sell it's definitely commercial there's a fair use uh, uh, area to talk about and there's a lot of gray area but the short answer is if you did not create the music yourself you really should not use it because you didn't pay to use it for that purpose um, I'm gonna show you what you can do about it but the idea here is even if you bought the CD or you bought the track off iTunes or Google Play you've only bought it for the purposes of listening back to it so if you ever notice when you when you watch like a sporting event at the end of the sporting event it says you know you, this this broadcast was only for the personal purposes not for rebroadcast etc so even that if you recorded the big game and then you're showing it to friends and family technically uh, you're violating their copyright because that's not what they allowed for it so with music you're not just going to copy your favorite track off of a CD or off of your music library you're going to say instead create your own music well yeah right for most of us right I, I can't do that or use appropriate uh, royalty free or copyright free copyright free or public domain type of music music that has been created and put out there to the world for the purposes of being able to be used for this stuff for free so YouTube has a library full of thousands of tracks that you are free to use for these things and that's what I'll show you in a moment and there's other websites too because we have YouTube what do we call it I think Creator Studio I'll check it in a moment YouTube Creator Studio there's another one called uh, the free music archive so that's uh, I guess like free music archive.org YouTube, of course, YouTube.com, and there's other ones. Uh, Wikimedia, which is related to Wikipedia, has its own collection of free stuff, free photos, free audio, etc. And then you can also get uh, licensed ones out of like Corbis or what else, other big ones, Getty, and so forth. But these are, are ones that are, are free for you to use for most purposes. I'm going to look at the uh, the YouTube one. Actually, before that, freemusicarchive.org. So a place like this is going to be um, okay. Take me to a genre. I want some electronic style music, and then further uh, ambient electronic or whatever. And then here's one, Bio Unit. I haven't heard this yet, so let's see what it sounds like. Okay, so sounds fine. I can get all of these. I can click the download and then add it to my project. So one place to get music. Now it's not going to be the famous music that you want, just like a real movie, because they paid millions of dollars to license it. We don't have that amount. So these these free versions, these similar enough versions, these safe versions are the ones that I recommend that you uh, that you use for your projects and usually they will just be instrumental which is what you want you don't want the music fighting with your voice so there's all of these different genres and artists and putting that all out here for free and uh, I recommend you go this route okay so that's one place the other place is is on YouTube but with this you have to first have a YouTube account. 
uh, on the free music archive you can just go to the website and click the download and you've got the song for YouTube you have to sign up and create an account and then there's this whole um, YouTube studio screen where you've got these extra features so I've got an account already you, you don't have to do this I'll, I'll give you a, a music clip in a moment uh, but going over to going over to this studio there's all of these stats close your eyes about that and then um, over here under uh, other features audio library so let me note that under YouTube so you need an account log in at the top right go to YouTube studio at left find other features and then select audio library so this one is like the free the free music archive uh, but it's YouTube's version and just like the other site you can also filter and search so here by default I see okay show me everything and these are the latest things that were recently added so something called numbers from this um, band in this style so that might work or not you're free to use the song and monetize your video so you can use the uh, the um, the music in your videos for free or commercial purposes and then I would just click download now what I would say here however some of these videos let's see do I have any examples I don't see any example but let me try something here Funny. there's also a way to search okay here's some examples I want to search for something that has a keyword funny so I might think that this this has a funny style Okay, so let's say I wanted to use that. Now, notice that some of these have an extra icon of this little person here. And this one, Cuckoo Clock, if I play it, it opens up and it says this. You're free to use it however you want. This other one with the little person, you're free to use this song and monetize, but you must include the following link in your description. So you have to copy all of this part and paste it into the description of your video if you upload it anywhere online. Not a big deal. Copy and paste is easy. I personally forget to do that. I've got so much stuff to do to edit the video, to put the sound, to promote it, to put it on Facebook. Whoops, I forgot to put that. And I violated their terms. Mm -hmm. So I personally, when I search anything here on YouTube, I go here to attribution and set the filter attribution not required. Don't even show me sound clips that I have to do this extra step that I'm going to forget. If you're not going to forget, no problem. You're going to find a great sound, but you have to copy and paste what it tells you to. So if I want tuba waddle, I have to copy this part right here and paste it into my description of my video when I upload it. If you instead say attribution not required, it will never show you those. Okay, I like that one. So I'm going to click download. So I'll give you this file in a moment. Um, if you have a YouTube account, you can download it and, and, and do it yourself. But I'm, I'm going to give you this file in a moment. And what I like here, then again, is you can search for a keyword. I found something that it's a style of funny, however they define it. And or I can go here directly. Show me a genre that everything that's you know jazz, uh, classical, focus on a particular instrument, focus on a mood, like dramatic duration I want a sound clip my video lasts two minutes I want to try to find a video that matches it because obviously I can cut it to the amount that I need but if I find a clip that's approximately the amount of time the person already made the song with a good beginning middle and end so I just need to synchronize my visuals with their audio and so I just I downloaded one and I'll use that one but I use this all the time for personal or professional for free or commercial things, I spend a little time browsing here. 
I personally really like to synchronize the audio with the video. Not everyone likes that or wants to do it. That's fine. You just have a music playing. But I like to when there's like the drum beat that it synchronizes with something on screen. I do that a lot in my stuff. It doesn't work with every client, but I like to do that. So I often spend a lot of time here. I listen to a bunch of them for a little bit. I download them all. Then I listen to them even deeper and fast forward and jump to different parts. And I spend, you know, 10 minutes just finding a soundtrack before even adding it to my video. Sometimes, I personally just listen to some of these soundtracks and then I start to put the video together so that I know that the video matches the audio. Sometimes I work on the video and then I go find a sound that matches the video. There's no wrong way to do it, but the audio can really uh, mix well with your video to just push it over the edge to be more professional. Let's see here. Instrumental only. No, it doesn't seem, it'll seem like it's going to mix. You won't know if it's got vocals or instrumentals until you start to play it. But like in what, in what way? Uh, instrumental, maybe. Let's say instrumental with a mood of dark. And it's only one thing. So that might be a way if you if you say here. I'm not sure if that where that keyword comes from because then that keyword was not in the title. It doesn't really show you any description. I wonder if there's a description that these artists added to it. So somewhere the thing has to be somehow categorized as instrumental for this to fully work. I, this will probably exclude some things. But that's a possible way. Search a Search the keyword instrumental plus a genre, and then maybe you'll get what you need. OK, this sound that I downloaded is the one we will use. You can use another one if you want. But this sound that I just downloaded, I'm going to put it into the network folder to give it to you to use. Let me remind you where the network folder is. Where would it say your computer, just music? Probably the desktop. Yeah. And let me give you this sound file. So the the network folder you need to minimize all your windows here let's go to computer at the top left double click computer icon at the top left you're going to see a section of network location classroom data drive z as in zebra double click that one Scroll down to our folder, Campus Video. And then you need to drag my, you need to drag the MP3 gaiety in the golden age, you need to drag that into your folder where your project is at. And then from your folder into Premiere. And then, into the, and then into the timeline. Yeah, it's an asset just like everything else. Drag it out of my folder into your folder and then into your assets. So I'm dragging it out of there. I've put it now into my project folder. In my project folder, I have the original video, I have the new sound I just added, I have the Premiere work in progress file, and all of these other sub things it creates for me. That's normal. And then lastly, drag it into the um, assets folder in Premiere. So now I've added a new sound. It's 1 minute 58. It doesn't have the green dot. It's not part of my project yet. What's the next step? Drag it down to the music track. That's right. We've got a music track. Drag it down there. So once it's in our assets here, going to drag it down into music track and again wherever you drag it be careful here if I drag it to this point it's going to take 10 seconds before it starts make sure you drag it where you want it probably at the beginning also it won't be in your audio then, right? there's already an audio track this audio is the one linked to the video so then we need its own track for music but technically you could put it up here on this blank audio track too but there's already a track called music, might as well use it. 
Now the problem here is the the volume of the music. The volume. The audio of the original, I mean the audio of the video, is drowning out my original audio. So if you don't see it, in my case, this track is closed. You can click the triangle. If you open that, you have this yellow line. You can increase the volume. You can decrease the volume. If you don't see that yellow line, your music track is closed, so you want to open it. And then this, yeah, and then this, this can be dragged higher or lower. See, it says, what's the volume there? Obviously, it starts at zero, higher volume, higher decibels. Now it's six times, or whatever the algorithmic scale is, louder. And you go down, all the way down to negative infinity, so silent. Now I will show you how to make it higher and lower depending. I'll show you that in a moment. But at the very least, maybe I'll bring it back down to negative 12. Well, if I can do that with this track to lower it, well, look, that audio track there has a... raise the volume. G5. This is a great smart... Every audio track has this yellow line where you can then increase it or decrease it. Oh, that's you talking, right? That's yeah. him talking, that's great. Yeah, so that's my own audio right there. Yeah, so audio and video together. And the problem is, well, I increased my volume three decibels on my video, but only for this clip. Not this clip, or this clip, or this clip, or this clip. So there might be something that I needed to do early on. And each one of these can be edited, of course. But I'm just showing you that if I knew in the beginning my voice was a little too low, I should have increased it all at the beginning so that they're all the same volume. If you select all of your clips, you can probably raise it at the same time. Yeah, there is a way somewhere to set them all. I think you have to raise it first here, and then you can select these and match it. Let's see how you do that. Usually I do it the first time. But there is a way after the auto audio gain. Somewhere there's a way to raise them all at once. That would be uh, a step early on. So we did it on purpose that we did it wrong. But um, here what you would often do, edit video early on before splitting clips. You may want to fix volume or fix visuals such as brightness etc this is another thing that happens here if I've already split this one clip into seven clips and I realize whoops I should have brightened it up I, I look a little too dark uh, too much shadow I have a way over on these adjustments to 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 fix things on a clip such as brightness and color and all of that but that's applying to this selected clip. There is a way to synchronize them all, I'm pretty sure. But this is one of these things to do early on. And it was a little more complex than I wanted to do at the beginning. But you have a way here to fine-tune the volume and the temperature and uh, lighting and everything. But that's better to do before you get too complex in editing. this in one take. You basically, whatever take you have, you want to adjust it. So that it's consistent. Yeah. you recommend using that smart fix? Just, just one moment. Um, yeah, so continuing what you were saying. Yeah, it's better that, um, yeah, if it's all one recording, fix up that one thing before you split it all up, because then you're going to get out of synchronization. Question? I personally don't like it very much. It seems that even on a good computer, it's very slow. It has to kind of analyze your video and figure out, OK, this part's dark. Let's brighten it. This part's light. Let's darken it. I feel that that smart fix is, it, it takes way too long to accomplish what it needs to, and I really don't like the results too much. 
I really like it better that it does give you the ability to manually go in and say let me go in here and go over to the lighting and it gives you like a cool little preview let's brighten it this much or that much or darken it this much so I kinda like the visual way a little better than the smart one under the the actual audio clip as well when you select your your audio track you also have adjust you don't have as many options as like the video because you can adjust audio in these ways changing its volume balance is it more to the left or to the right of the speaker treble bass audio gain again this one I, I kind of don't like the automaticness of it but under this volume here I have another way to adjust it with actual numbers I want it exactly negative 10 decibels more silent so from 0 it dropped it down negative 10 so that it hopefully doesn't overlap my voice so that inserted a keyframe right at the very beginning yes Associated. exactly so we have the ability to lower and raise the volume whenever we want by adding these sort of little keyframes. I'll show that in a moment. Right now, the whole volume went down to negative 12. But maybe I want it at the beginning to be at 100% and then fade down, fade out where my voice is on and then be at a low volume. And then when there's like no audio here, maybe to come back up and then come back down when my voice is there. So I can get pretty complex. And to make it dynamically lower and raise and such, we have these little keyframes that we can add. Wherever we add a little keyframe, we've got a spot where then we can adjust it. This is kind of complex, so let me show it to you first, and then we'll try it. Right now, the right now the volume is normal, which is too loud. So wherever. I have my playhead, I can click, and I have to have the audio track selected, I can click to add one of these little diamonds, one of these little um, keyframes. There's a spot here where I could start adjusting the volume. So for example, here, add another one, here, add another one. The point is wherever there is one of those, then when I adjust it like this, so very loud, decreasing down to zero volume, add another one here so I can bring it up again, so you know have the volume drop in or fade out and so forth as necessary, I can have as many of these as I want. This is the part when you're really, really, really going to want to use the exact values there so that it's consistent. So right here it's 6, and down here it's 2, and here it's negative 12, and so forth. Instead of eyeballing it, you can get exact values right there. This, I personally think, is very tedious but necessary, depending on your video. If you want anything special like the volume increases and decreases as necessary, you're going to need to do something like that. If you just want a volume consistent all the way around, just set it at the very beginning and then it's consistent all the way across. Yes? I know we're not touching on it, but when you showed me when we were going on the break with the time mapping, does that have a concept of keyframes too where you can. It does, yes. It's a little bit different than these keyframes, but when, it, when you're in that time mapping, you can make a section. This will be fast make a new section this will be slow make a new section this will be fast again so um, you, you can do that as well now I've made too many changes I don't like it. I'll just delete it and put the video put the audio back in and maybe just do a simple start at the beginning at that volume here decrease it you always have to play with these values. I can't tell you exactly what to choose. It really depends. But starting often like at negative 20. So then I have to play it back. Hello and welcome to the fading game yourself. 
yeah, the, the right click one, fade in, fade out, it might not give you exactly what you want. It starts you off at a default of one second, but I might need a second and a half, or if I want to do the fancy stuff of lowering and raising the volume dynamically, I have to do that manually. So this is one of the ones I often do very, very manually, and it takes a little bit of effort. Once you get the idea, it, it works well. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. I'm Victor. Maybe, Is it maybe too much. Prince. It's got a dual camera. This costs about two hundred and fifty dollars. So again, this is the stuff. It, this video is one minute long. We've been working on it almost three hours. It's um, a demonstration video. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So. The more you do this, the more you practice, the more streamlined it gets. The more keyboard shortcuts you you um, you, you master, the better. Uh, it's all about practice, and you know, seventy nine dollars, ninety nine dollars. Maybe I don't want to pay for that. iMovie is a version that is similar to this. You'll be doing similar things. Uh, the Windows Ten Movie Editor is a version that's free that you can start playing with this. Um, if you are going to get serious about this, I would recommend Premiere. I would recommend checking the Adobe website or Fry's Electronics or, or Costco. They often have it on sale for $79. Regular price, $99. One-time fee. You don't need to go to the big, uh, expensive, professional uh, Premiere Pro. That's, that costs you know between $20 and $40 per month. And I want to keep using it month after month. That adds up. That's why it's pro. And it's the interface is a little different, but it still has tracks, the preview, screen, it still has all of these other drawers for effects and much more complexity. But I really recommend Premiere as both beginner and intermediate level. And even you can do advanced things. <clears throat> I was gonna show off and show you a few things I've done for clients here. Let me show you a couple. So that's, uh, that's one of these examples of putting all of this, <clears throat> putting all of this together in terms of, well, there's all this that got recorded and all of these clips being put together. And this was, you know, an hour of preparation and recording it again. And oops, I knocked something over. Let's do it again. So we've got all this raw footage. And then using the, uh, the editor to uh, put it together and put the sound. That's that's a sound I got right out of this audio editor from from um, from YouTube. And then the graphic that one was made in Photoshop and their logo. And then it's a, this sort of commercial about this this restaurant plus Grubhub. You know, it delivers it right to your door. Let's see other examples. Uh, what do I want to show? Um, That was not that fun. Um, sure, it's 17 seconds. This is almost lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that one is, is that one's a, a series of just still photos. Remember, you don't have to just put video into Premiere. You can put still photos. And what's happening in between each photo is a transition. One of those fade animations in between, and then a little zoom in. So it's it was several different photos of putting together a taco, and then animating in between them to make the item appear. It can be a video in slow motion. It can be a video in slow motion. That was what we were saying earlier that... It could be like stop action. There's a tool down here, time remapping, 
uh, to deal with fast forward, slow motion, etc. The zoom, there's a tool right there for zooming in. So we're not going to quite get to them because there's so many things to do. But you, you can make these videos in a variety of ways. This one's all focused on still photos, sort of like a stop motion and all of that. And it's basically photo to photo to photo with a transition of cross dissolve. And then the zoom in at the beginning, it's select the photo, and then we have zoom into it or zoom out of it. Uh, let's do this other one over here. Um, it's a little too dark on the projector, but it looks okay in real life. So this, you combine a lot of different things. Yeah, if if you play without, you know, without audio, um, sometimes one way to learn about doing good video is just to watch it, not just listen to it, because the music obviously does something else, gives you a meaning and a, and a feeling. Here, it's a bunch of different clips of the beginning and ending of making this dish. So it's just a lot of you know recording it. It was handheld and and so forth, and then in these. In the editor, there's no transitions and such. It's just this video, then this video, then this video, and then here's just a little fun movement of the camera and a zoom out. And those are just different separate clips put all together. What are you using for video? You mean the camera? Yeah. Uh, what was that one? That was uh, the, the Canon uh, Rebel T6 or something that, that I had. So one of the bigger sort of professional sorts of cameras, medium level, but this could be all shot on a cell phone. You can do all of this on a cell phone, especially these newer especially HD. Especially the new 3D type cell. Yeah, and and uh, Casey the, Neistat Samsung commercial. Uh, they did uh, they did that. They went to like the Bahamas or somewhere. They shot the whole thing in the water, out of the water. Yeah, you can. Uh, it's been the dream for the yeah. past decade after the first iPhone that you know you can make a whole movie on an iPhone. Yeah, these are just so high quality nowadays, 4K video and everything that you can do really great results. The trick, of course, is, is your hand shaking too much? Is the audio too windy? Uh, are you pointing at the wrong thing? So that's still, the hardware of it is still a concern, but the ability to add the text and the audio and clips and all of that, that's still something you can do. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in in fifteen. That's definitely that way as well. That little pieces uh, at a time, and then you put all the clips together here. So I wanted to show one of these. So one of my hobbies is uh, San Diego Comic Con and comic books and stuff. So I've got some fun videos over here. Where do I have it? Um, Comic Con 2016, 17, 18. Uh, one of these over here. Uh, okay, yeah, this one. Okay, so this one. Can you play it like 75% speed? <laughs> Let's see.
that's my cousin. <laughs> I really was. Famous. Yeah, I was actually dead. Yeah, you have to get releases for any of these people. Are some of these just regular admittance people that are standing behind the, in front of the, that paper to get photographed? Or are just average, you know, participants, not vendors per se? This is just a huge variety of people that are there that, that they paid for it or they're just standing around. And, you know, it's a, it's a music video here about all of these styles of, of uh, costumes. So um, this is one example. San Diego Comic Con. So obviously the style of this is very frenetic fast-paced, a lot of clips, a lot of cuts, a lot of work, uh, a lot of different days of shooting. It's not just one time. It's like the four days of Comic-Con just shooting a lot. And, um, you know, synchronizing the sound and finding the perfect soundtrack for it. And this is just one of these ones from my account of just, you know, putting something fun together. But this is, again, all of that, a bunch of clips, shaky cam style and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. So just one of the many ways to do these things. And this is all done in this software. Editing the clips, adding the sound, you know, from something very like uh, professional and boring to maybe something more, um, you know, fun and light. But all of that can be done through the uh, this video editing software. So within Premiere Light, as it were, are there any limitations in terms of the number of layers that you can have? The limitation really is only in your own computer hardware. So all these layers and, and everything takes up some amount of RAM and hard drive space. So the more you have it, for all intents and purposes, the more unlimited resources you have. If you've got you know, an older computer, less RAM and resources, then it, it, it's slower. It has less ability for layers and so forth. So whatever you can provide, the more the better, because then you have more capability. Yeah, let's watch that five hour long video. <laughs> that obviously is a bunch of videos put together, but that's uh, five hours of comic. Mega mix? Yeah. Wow. Did you dress up? He spent. What's that? Did you dress up? Four I dressed days. up as regular Victor, yeah. <laughs> not professional. Victor, Victor photo. Not, uh, not professional Victor, but regular Victor. Are the tickets really, ex I mean, I know this might be off subject, but are the tickets to Comic Con real expensive? I, mean, I would love to take my son one. Day. If you can get them. If yeah. you can get them, they, they, oh, they, sell, out, yeah. they sell out in, in an hour. So they're already yeah. sold out for the next one? They were already sold out three months ago. Yeah, yeah they sold out as soon as they went online. Oh. As for the price, yes, the, the price ranges between at the most cheapest, like for one day for like $60, and then four days like $260. But you know, big conventions like CES and all of that, those are thousands of dollars. So Comic Con's a bargain. Yeah. And Comic Con is a non profit. They could charge much more for one. Yeah. So those were some examples of videos, the ranging of professional to, to, to fun. But it all comes back to how we're editing here. Now, these video clips that I've got up on, on YouTube. Well, they started off as a project here in Premiere or whatever video editor. Let's do our final step that I have listed up here. Okay, editing, text, music, export. So this is the process of putting all your separate pieces together into one file to upload where you need it. Easy answer, set it to 1080p HD. There are different sizes and qualities that we can make our video as for different purposes. If you're going to upload it to something like YouTube or Facebook, they basically have unlimited storage. So if you set your quality to a high quality, that's great. Your video will be the most visually, you know, um, appealing in quality wise if you're going to email this to people or upload it to your own website where speeds might be slower or space might be less then we have these various sizes that we can set and we can see all of this right here so let's say this is my video I put it together it's perfect not really but you know let's say it's ready at the top right corner we have the button export and share clicking here you get a lot of options in terms of 
um, let me do a quick export. Let me prepare it to send it to devices. Let me prepare it to burn it onto a disk. Let me prepare it to send it up to Facebook and so forth. Um, I want to upload it to YouTube. I want to put it on Facebook, Vimeo, whatever. I want only the audio version. Okay, for most of us, I would recommend in devices 1080 HD. It might suggest other things. It might suggest the Ultra 4K super, 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 super high quality, which you might not need. Because, also notice, if I set it to this lower quality, the file is going to be about 146 megabytes. If I set it to the next higher level, it's at 290. If I set it to the usual HD quality, it's 280. If I set it to that, it's one gigabyte, one and a half. So these higher and higher qualities are going to be visually better and audio-wise better, but at the cost of it just being a bigger file that you have to attach to the email or upload to wherever. Because to get these videos up to YouTube, I then have to press the button Upload to YouTube, and depending on your internet speed, it's going to happen in a minute or in an hour. So how long did, it, did you think it took me to upload my five hour long video to, to YouTube? Uh, you sent it and came back a week later. Pretty much. <laughs> These ones of two minutes, okay, it might upload in two minutes or ten seconds. Depends on your internet speed. Yeah. When, when I do um, some of these classes, and I, I teach a social media class that, that lasts three months. And in that class, we do video editing on one day, and then we do using YouTube on another day, which we don't have time for. But when we do that version of the class, and we finish the video, then it's about uploading it. And we see that when we upload it on campus here, it takes 10 seconds. Yeah. Uh, colleges often have very fast speeds. Then you try to upload your same video at home, and it's 10 minutes. Because your service provider at home might give you great download speeds, and they're always talking about their great download speeds, but they never tell you their upload speeds. One yeah, one megabyte or less. They're going to give you a hundred megabyte or megabits download speed, but they don't tell you that one megabit upload. So, the so point of that, what's that? Depending on your neighborhood, and, depending your, on your neighborhood and your service provider, and a lot of things. How much things. you're paying? How much you're paying? You're on. Your tier, etc. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wi-Fi or not? Yeah. So, to make it easy, like I said, device, computer. HD 1080. I also have found that setting this to low, even though wow, low quality sounds low, it actually is pretty good that I don't really see much difference. And it goes from 74 megabytes to 218. So I've, in, for the past few months, for myself and from clients, at HD quality, low HD quality, it's still very good visually and audio, and it saves me what is that more than half of the of the size and upload time. Yeah, it's interesting that the next HD 1080 over at the low setting actually has a higher, larger file size than the 1920 by 1080. It's a bit of a non-standard size, 1440 to 1080, the aspect ratio isn't quite the same. This is 16 by 9, and I don't think that's 16 by 9. So yeah, it's kind of weird that even though it's like more squashed, smaller visually squal smaller pixels, it's still a higher file size for some reason. Yeah. So HD 1080, low quality, is what I would recommend. And again, don't be scared that it says low quality. It's still at 1080, very high. So we'll say set it to 1080p plus low compression quality. Yeah. And this is saying right here, where is this about to get saved to? In my case, it's about to go to a completely different folder that I wasn't paying attention to. I might want to browse to the desktop or the same folder we've been working with. What's the name of my video here? I can leave it as is or just call it something. I can call it, you know, Tech Review Tuesday for. Um, June 79, 10, 11, June 11. So I'm not going to fully expect you to do this because, again, this is just sort of a learning process. But this export screen, after I click it, 
then this is again where you see the quality of your computer because even though it's only in total a minute and 58 seconds, it's going to take a moment. It's going to take at least the, the original time, even though that's jumping between times. Mm. So the longer the video, the more layers, the more music, the more text, the, the longer this rendering process takes, the longer it takes to put all of those separate pieces into one file. It's interesting that the frame rate's at 24. Yeah, you, if you go to custom, you can then also set the, the frame rate. Um, those sorts of details, if it's necessary for video quality and so forth, I would want to tweak them. But as a starting point, the defaults are, are pretty good. I haven't tried it, but there seems to be a button for it. I almost always go this way, save it to the computer at 1080, and then I can do stuff with it. But it seems to have some um, direct results as well. So um, the final video is right here. 57 megabytes. There's the version before any edits. 1 minute 39 seconds, 50 megabytes, the version that I just created, 158 with the extra music, 57 seconds, and this is the final version. Good question. Hello and welcome to the Tech Review Tuesday. One moment. This is the show where I reviewed something cool. Yeah, so it's all put together. It's got the text, it's got the rearrangements and uh, music and so forth. Yeah, the, the question, and I've been hearing a little bit in the social media, uh, people uploading stuff to YouTube. Uh, the purpose of going up to 4K and 6K and, and all these other things, who could possibly be the market, or what would be the venue we're, to go with this higher resolution? We're on the cutting edge at the moment, so not a lot of people have 4K monitors to really see every dot. But yet, several years ago, it's like, who wants to do HD? No one has that yet, and now HD is common. So in a few years, 4K, 4K will be the common one. Right now, it's just like, you know, um, uh, enthusiasts or people with a little bit extra money that want to buy the best. And for a lot of people, that, that's way too overkill. But in a few years, you know, you could be a trailblazer and be uploading all your videos in 4K now so that when everyone gets it 4K in a few years, yours was always the best. But there's not too much of a benefit, I think, at the moment to go that high quality output. So if you have a higher system, you know, recording at 4K or 6K or something like that, you can save your final, I mean, it's going to take a little bit longer also when you uh, process and do things in 4K and 6K, so you're going to extend your editing time, but yeah. let's say you're willing to do that, and then for upload purposes, you bring it down to, you know, one of the 1080s, a little bit more common. Yes, while you're working in Premiere, you could be working at the highest, highest quality, and then at the end, downsample it to a common quality, and then you always have your original very high quality once everything catches up, but you can be working with the regular 1080p at the moment. So it doesn't really matter what you're shooting, like your landscapes and like outdoors and stuff, you still over It depends what you're trying to show. I do see 4K for a lot of like nature things, because you do want to see all of those detail. I do see it also for like um, so, uh, so some things like um, real estate, where, where you're showing all of these great shots of the house and the little drone is hovering all around and showing every, every level and then the 4K makes it look amazing and I want to buy the house. So it depends on the, the end result in your product and what you're trying to show. If your item does have a lot of, you know, if your concept has a lot of detail, that's what 4K is for. But who's going to watch it, um, that's still, we're in a transition period for that. So as we look at the time, we're getting very, very close to the end. There's still much more we could learn about this, but in general, um, we've covered all of these concepts about, uh, we've got some, vi some raw video that we imported, that we made some edits, we added some text, we added some music, um, we did this little bit of exporting with, uh, with these basic settings, and now that I've got this file, well, that's as far as I can take you there, because now I've got that file that I can upload to my website. I could uh, send it on an email, I could upload it to YouTube, I could put it on Facebook, Vimeo, whatever, 
and the big idea is I have some experience now you're not a pro yet you need some more uh, some more work and classes and knowledge and even uh, doing it for years and years is always something new to learn it's all about practice so hopefully uh, you found some valuable things in the class and can start to apply these things these notes that I wrote here I'm gonna put them into the network folder if you want a copy of them this work that you did this folder you can take it with you if you want uh, you won't be able to do much with it because this folder has the original unedited video and you need Adobe Premiere Elements to, to go back to make changes to the video to export it again. So you can take this folder if you want. I'll put my copy of my finished version in the folder. Let me also put the notes in there and then we'll wrap it up with a little bit of lab time if anyone needs a little one-on-one -on -one help. And then we'll wrap up at one.